So uh, good morning, my name is Scott Van Beck, I'm the uh, exec Executive Director of the uh, Houston A Plus Challenge and I uh, want to welcome everyone to uh, the first uh, speaker series of uh, the 2012-2013 uh, school year. Um, our two guests uh, have been with us, uh, I guess, starting with a superintendent's lunch uh, yesterday, and uh, then we did a uh, uh, dinner uh, last night, and uh, this is the uh, public event uh, this morning. Uh, there are a couple of uh, thank yous uh, I want to issue. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Chevron uh, and Joni Baird. Jo Joni was not able to be with us uh, this morning, but uh, she hosted uh, last night, and uh, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, if, if you're kind of a usual suspect at these speaker series, um, you, you've heard me uh, talk about this, but actually I've been in uh, Houston almost 30 years now, and uh, uh, I can't think of uh, many that go beyond one hand of uh, corporates uh, that are supportive of public education, uh, like Chevron. And uh, we, it, it would be uh, hard to do uh, what we do in terms of bringing in speakers to specifically uh, uh, concentrate on the topic of public engagement. Uh, we couldn't do that without uh, the support of uh, corporates like Chevron. So thanks to uh, Joni Baird. Also, um, I want to thank uh, the folks here at the uh, Museum of Fine Arts. And uh, so I, I uh, had the uh, pleasure of uh, serving on their education committee. I've gotten to know Victoria Ramirez uh, uh, very well. And uh, the Museum of Fine Arts, not only with this event, uh, but through, with most public events in Houston, have just been outstanding. Uh, we are so, so fortunate uh, to not only have uh, a museum like this, uh, but more importantly, uh, a uh, museum staff uh, that is uh, committed to outreach, uh, committed to partnerships. And uh, without that, uh, we probably would have been sitting in the uh, A-plus conference room uh, this morning. But we're not. We're uh, here in the uh, Brown Auditorium, and uh, it's going to be a great morning. So uh, I'm going to introduce uh, both speakers, and uh, then uh, uh, Nirav is going to come uh, to the podium and uh, start with uh, his uh, story uh, around New Orleans, and then we're going to ask Chris uh, to uh, come up and talk a little bit about what's going on uh, in uh, Tennessee. But uh, I don't know whether uh, any of you saw the uh, Ed Week issue, uh, but there is a uh, story that asks a question, um, you know, is New Orleans a model uh, for America? And uh, I read that with uh, considerable interest. Uh, but where I was first uh, introduced to Nirav Kingsland uh, is, uh, was a series of letters uh, that he wrote uh, also uh, with Ed Week uh, to the superintendents of this country. And I think uh, now that I know him uh, a little bit personally, uh, I can understand uh, exactly where his uh, directness uh, comes from in those letters. And uh, those letters basically challenge superintendents and school boards uh, to start at least considering uh, the opportunity of um, reinventing um, what we, in my day, have considered to be sort of the traditional public school district. And so over the last 24 hours here in Houston, I've really learned not only from the Rob, but also from Chris. And uh, you know, one of the things that I said last, uh, last night was, I think a lot of this just boils down to leader courage at uh, multiple levels. Uh, but I really appreciate Nirav uh, and uh, uh, his um, coaching of me. Uh, we didn't even know each other. Uh, but he got me thinking, and I bet he got most superintendents thinking, and school boards, I hope, uh, thinking about uh, not, only, not is there a better way, but is there a way different way uh, of doing things. Um, his bio, I think, is uh, in your packet, uh, but uh, he uh, 
comes from Indiana, uh, went to Tulane, graduated from the Yale Law School, uh, sharp, sharp mind in terms of school reform. And now he spends uh, most, if not all, of his time figuring out New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, our second guest, uh, we know uh, a tad bit better in Houston. Um, this is Chris Barbic. And uh, Chris uh, is known to Houstonians as the founder uh, of Yes College Prep. And uh, I've known Chris uh, for considerable years. Uh, and one of the things that's always impressed, uh, impressed me about Chris uh, is, is, is his ability uh, to come into a room and learn. That it, that to me, that is his most impressive uh, trait. Uh, because uh, when you get to his level, uh, I've met a lot of people who want to come into a room and teach. Um, Chris doesn't like that. Uh, just an example, yesterday we were uh, getting ready for the superintendent's lunch and he asked me, he said, hey Scott, he said, you think it'd be okay if I asked the superintendent a couple of questions because I can't figure this out up in Tennessee. I was like, absolutely. And the superintendents really appreciated that, right? Because superintendents oftentimes aren't put into that consulting uh, environment. So we're in for an exciting uh, morning. And uh, after uh, uh, some presentations by the two of uh, our guests, uh, then uh, usually I'm Phil Donahue. Uh, I run around, you know, with the microphone. But now I'm going to be like uh, Ellen or Oprah. I'm, I'm going to get on the couch. Um, I'm going to get what, like way comfortable, right? So everybody get ready for that. Um, anyway, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Neerov Kingsland, who's going to give us uh, some background on the story of New Orleans. Neerov. Thank you, Scott. 